that's a very important topic because we know with the polycythemia vera patients actually live with the disease for forever, hopefully, if, if they don't transform or don't have any other adverse outcomes. So uh, we have now currently um, options that include uh, the most convenient oral hydroxyurea that's been around for years, that's been actually directed for patients with a high-risk disease, which has been conventionally called as anybody who has ever had a blood clot or is over the age of 60. Uh, now we have uh, other agents, they are approved or emerged in the field, uh, a little bit more inconvenient getting because it's injectable, but uh, offers a little bit more behind just the control of the blood counts, which is uh, interferon. There is a proof called the RAPEG interferon that has been pegulated interferon that's been used in the field for the past couple decades, uh, but it's injectable. So, so that is basically to discuss the patient's preference uh, versus ability to do injections. However, they are not really a big deal. I have patients of all ages doing it and actually being super proud of themselves that they can do it. Uh, and it's ultimately, at least with the novel one, only once every month. So it's not so much of a burden to do it. Uh, so, so I think that discussion comes into what, what do we want to achieve and offer our patients? Uh, because the hydroxyurea controls the count, sometimes controls some of the symptoms, the splenomegalies, but the interferon offers better control of the disease in the background, especially control of the jak 2 ll burden, gets after the malignant clones, gets off the inflammation better. So long term, it could decle decrease the burden of the disease and hopefully prevent the progression. And we already seen some data from clinical trials that actually told us patients that would achieve better control would have a better, what we call event-free survival that included actually progression plus vascular events. So, so that's something very important, I think, because there is an age range for patients with polycythemia vera in an early adulthood. So we have patients in the 20s or 30s and 40s that, that definitely would live with the disease for a long time and would deserve better, particularly prevent the possible disease progression. So I would say patients that, you know, doesn't need to do really more in their late 70s, 80s with no comorbidities. Hydroxyurea is a very convenient, a very easy to manage. It's a pill, so I definitely would recommend to do that. It, it also could be a junk in a small dose on younger patients if the disease is not controlled. Uh, Interferon definitely would be a suitable agent in any form that is available for younger patients. And I'm not determining it age because I have young 70 year old who runs a marathons and I have an old 30 years old. So, so, so that's pretty much is up to the patients also. And of course there are some contraindications to both of these agents with the interferons a little bit more on the inflammatory path as well as some um, depression or, or psychological issues. So that has to be taken into consideration, but, but overall taking the, the agents together over the years, the side effects profile, it's about the same incidence, just a different version. So I would definitely keep open both of the agents. They could be circled one after the other, they could be ejected a little bit if we can do, uh, but um, I would definitely encourage to, to, to consider to do a little bit more for younger people.